Hey guys, in this video I want to go over 5 things Halo Infinite needs before Season 2. I'm not going to talk about cheating or desync because 343 have already told us what they're doing with those things. And we know there is a February patch coming which will hopefully address cheating and the desync in the game. So these will be 5 things that haven't really been addressed by 343 just yet. However, these are things that need to be in Halo Infinite before Season 2. Otherwise, people will stop playing the game. So that's basically what this list is for. These are things that will keep Halo players playing Halo Infinite. So let's jump into it. The first thing Halo Infinite needs before Season 2 is a rank progression system. It can be similar to Halo Reach, it could be similar to Halo 3, or even Halo 5. However, a rank progression system more akin to Halo Reach would be more suited for Halo Infinite in my opinion, compared to Halo 4 and 5's Spartan rank. We of course know 3 for 3 are planning to add a global rank progression system, but I'm just hoping they're not planning to wait until Season 2, because Season 2 is 100 days away now, and that is quite a long time in terms of a game's lifespan, and 2022 has a lot of games releasing this year. A lot of good games. So 3 for 3 are going to need to keep people playing the game and a rank progression system, you know, where players can constantly see themselves achieving something, is so crucial for this game's longevity. I've already seen a lot of people on Twitter, Reddit, and even YouTube say that they've got nothing else to do now, that they've completed both the battle pass and the event battle pass. In every other Halo game, you would be working towards a rank, which as it stands right now, you can't do in Halo Infinite. Again, we know an actual progression system is coming to Halo Infinite, but 3 for 3 cannot put this one off until Season 2. This needs to come as soon as possible to keep people playing the game. It's as simple as that. The next thing we need is actually quite small, but it's a career stats page, where on a player's profile you can see what they've achieved in Halo Infinite, all of their stats, and what they've done in the campaign. In Halo Infinite right now, we have our own profile. That profile basically shows nothing. You can only see how many games you've played, and how many custom games you've played, and the difficulty you completed the campaign in. You can inspect a person's Spartan, which is really cool, and I like how it goes into detail showing all the customizable items that the Spartan is rocking. But that is literally the only good thing with the current Halo Infinite profile. There is nothing really there showing off your stats. You can't check your KD, you can't check how many kills or deaths you've had over Halo Infinite's lifespan, and you can only show off your competitive rank. Halo 5 gets a lot of slack, but Halo 5 had a really good stats page in my opinion. So if we could even get something like that, I'd be pretty happy. But we definitely need a career stats page before Season 2. Now this one is pretty straightforward. We need new maps in Halo Infinite, because right now we've only got 10 maps and while 10 maps is a decent offering at launch it's just not going to cut it until May. I've already seen plenty of people say that the maps aren't great and that they're already getting bored of playing on the same maps all the time. Now there may be a reason for that because three of the maps you can only play in BTB, one of the maps which is launch site you can only play in quick play. So many players are feeling like they're playing the same maps over and over again but there are Halo Infinite leaks showing some new maps that will eventually be coming to the game down the line. Now we haven't received the Halo Infinite roadmap map just yet, but I'm really hoping some new maps arrived in the game before Season 2. At least one or two arena maps, and maybe one more BTB map, because as it stands, the current offering will get stale easily in the next month or two. So new maps will just keep the game fresh, and then Season 2 they can release like another 3 or 4 maps to get more people back to the game. The next thing we need are all the basic Halo modes, like Infection, Griff Ball, BTB Heavies, Team Snipers, plus more, need to be in the game before Season 2. Many people are thinking that Infection won't be coming to the game until Forge, because right now on these arena maps, Infection probably won't work that well. That's the only thing I'm worried about myself because I'm a massive fan of Infection and having to wait until possibly Season 3 for Infection is just not going to cut it when that is such a core cool mode of Halo. And Infection has a massive player base. If 3 for 3 even just dropped that mode by itself with like, you know, 3 maps that you could play on it, a lot of people would play the shit out of that, including myself. Now, while I hope that comes before Season 2, I don't see something like that coming until like April at the earliest. But with that said, I think modes like Griff Ball, Team Snipers, BTB Heavies shouldn't be that hard to bring to the game. Now, Snipers is literally just set the loadout to just sniper and go nuts, but then I want to have that for ranked as well. Griff Ball is a little different because 3 for 3 will need to create at least one or two Griff Ball maps, you know, where players can go at it, and they'll have to release that with that game mode. But again, with how good Halo Infinite's Forge is, that really should not take them that long. BTB Heavies, they can just have the exact same BTB maps, and then just have all the vehicles there at both spawns, and just have the Pelican drop in vehicles all of the time. That would just be be so chaotic and fun, and I'm really surprised 3 for 3 haven't done that yet. BTB heavies will work so well in Halo Infinite, so I definitely want to see that. Again, as I said earlier, all of these modes coming back to the game before Season 2 will, in turn, keep Halo players playing the game. The more content there is on offer, the more chance and more likelihood people will stay and play the game. Okay, the final thing a Halo Infinite needs before Season 2 is cross-core customization. It's something 3 for 3 have touched on very briefly, but we don't know when it will be coming out. This is something I hope to see before 
before season two because it will just allow players to express themselves more freely and players will have a lot more individuality with their Spartans. So you're not going to see the same one Spartan all the time in the battlefield. The bots currently can do it. If you verse bots in bot arena, you can actually see some of the bots running around with cross core customization. It looks pretty cool. There are some that look a little crazy, but you know, who cares? That's the fun of it. If people want to create wacky looking Spartans, they can do that. If they want to create badass Spartans with all these different configurations, they can do that too. There will be so much potential with what people can create with their Spartans if cross core customization is unlocked. 3 for 3 were constantly preaching that Halo Infinite had the best customization in the series and would heavily take after Halo Reach. So unlocking cross core customization would just go a long way and allowing players to create their own Spartan in the ways 3 for 3 originally intended. So yeah, that is pretty much the list there guys. Those are 5 things we need to see in Halo Infinite before Season 2. Not only to make Halo Infinite better, but to ensure all of us Halo players continue playing the game. I'm really curious to know your thoughts guys, let me know if you agree or disagree with what I've said, and of course drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, and if you want to support me that little bit extra, subscribing to the channel would help me out so much. So anyway guys, I'll leave it there, and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one.